Uh, here's my scooter. Uh, I have already scanned it uh, with the author in my previous video, but this time I want to do some improvement. This uh, plastic hook, uh, it breaks several times, it's not strong, and I want to uh, redesign it uh, and then I, send, I will send it for printing in a stylus still. So I start with uh, removing this. It has a special screw head, so I need to use this uh, original screw. And I will also scan this part with the uh, laptop. So I'll use the only the point cloud. I won't be using the mesh for modeling in CAD. And this part is movable. So I lace them up a bit. Yes. I have a uh, 50 FPS. I flip over to make a second scan. I think the new firmware and the software tracks uh, better than the last one. This one is a 3.2.14. Okay, this should be uh, enough, I think. So we have to scan top and the bottom. I will do a point cloud optimization, inward selection, 0.1. So I have about 1.8 million point clouds. Okay, I move to the next one. One point eight millions. Let's see if the new software 3.2.14 can merge it automatically. So I hit the point cloud merging. Scan one and scan two. See if they can merge it. Wow. They can merge it because in the in the older version of the software I have to do the manual manual merging here. But this time you just merge it. Perfect. So first thing I need to do is I will export this into a uh, point cloud. Okay, before that, I don't use mesh in the reverse engineering because the most CAD software is not designed for polygonal mesh. You can't just import a million of polygonal mesh into a CAD software. You can do that in Blender, 3ds Max, Maya, but you shouldn't do it in CAD software. CAD is designed to be referenced from point clouds, not mesh. The next products uh, support uh, point clouds since uh, 2011. And if you convert uh, the point cloud to mesh, uh, most scanner software will apply smoothing and you get a different. So point cloud is like a low file with uh, minimum automation. Clearity scan software can export uh, two files, PLY and ASC. Uh, none of this file is supported by Autodex product. So I need to convert it into the LAS files first by using a software called uh, Cloud Compare. I will just export into PLY, save it. Uh, this is Cloud Compare. Cloud Compare is a freeware full of uh, function to manipulate point clouds, created uh, mesh from the point clouds, align the point clouds. It's the best tool in the market today and it's free to use. Uh, what I have to do is I will drag the export file, the PLY file. This is not a mesh. A PLY can be in uh, both mesh and point clouds. So this one is point cloud. Just drag and drop here. Click apply. It looks like uh, it has only one color. So I click on uh, EDL. You get some shading. Uh, first thing is I'm going to change its color. Click on the point cloud here. Uh, edit color. Set unique because I'm going to import into the Autodesk Inventor. I need the blight blight color so it can it has a contrast with the the background screen. I uh, usually like uh, the light green here. Then uh, I need to align it to the X Y Z. If you see this uh, corner here, if I place on the top view, you see that the object is not aligned to the plane. Uh, it's a bit difficult to create a model out of this. I will align uh, this mounting point. Mounting flank here 
to the XY plane. Uh, I click on the object and then there's a three uh, small triangle tools here. You click on that and you specify three points. One, two, and three. Our object is now aligned to the XY plane. You see, Z axis is, uh, Z -axis is uh, upside down. So I need to flip that up, click on here, this little tool here. I will uh, rotation on the X axis, uh, 180 degrees. Okay, now we will be in a correct X, Y, Z axis. See the Z is up. I click on the object, click on the rotation tools. I will rotate it on the Z axis um, using the mouse. Okay, so what you need to do is that you can do it approximation, uh, adjustment to the X and Y, Z axis. I do it by using the 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 edge of the windows here. Now you have a very good approximation of the X and Y axis. Yes, here is already aligned. Hit a check mark. Now you have a very good alignment. Not 100%, not in the micron levels, but close enough. We do that again in, in uh, Autodex Inventor. We can adjust that again. Okay, from this, I click on the uh, object here and then I will um, uh, save it as the LAS file. L is from Liger. Liger is the really first um, uh, supply for the scanner for construction. Uh, Recap Recap is a software that come bundled with the Autodex design package. So if you don't have it, you need to make a subscription for this uh, software to use with the Autodex Inventor product. But if you have a uh, SolidWorks, you may maybe you can import LAS file directly. And then I uh, drop the LAS files into here. The uh, actual files here will be 1000 times bigger. I then uh, save it. And that's it. I can close it. Okay, this is a printing company, JLC 3DP. Uh, they print uh, metal and uh, all kind of uh, engineering plastic. As you can see here that they can print. Uh, so here's the specification uh, that it requires that the wall thickness is two millimeters and 1.5 millimeters minimum. And the size is uh, 39 by 39 by uh, 29 centimeters and the uh, tolerance is 0 0.3. Uh, you should keep that in mind. Take about 72 hours to create. Tensile strength is 600. Yield strength is 400. So we're here in the Autodex Inventor. Uh, first, I draw a base of the, align it to the, the bow flank here. I use a sketch line along the edge of the object. I uh, extrude it to the flank surface. This is the bow flank surface, which is about 3.75 millimeters. And then I make a hole cutting using the point cloud as a reference. And then I make uh, two cylindrical keys here using the point clouds as a reference as well. Then I draw a hook uh, by using the, the original bracket as the reference because I want, I want the same extension and the size of the hook. Then I add the uh, more thickness of the material here the weight of the material is uh, 123 grams. I want it to be lighter. So I uh, cut out the thickness to make it two millimeters thick. If I hide the point cloud, you can see that. I cut out the surface. I make it even lighter. I make uh, two cutting holes here, make it hollow. Now we have uh, about 92 grams. Then I make a fillet here to make it less sharp. When I put some bags, hang some bags here, I make a fillet here to make it more smoother. And then I add I add the materials here to increase the strength, which I will talk about it uh, by using a finite element. And then I add a fillet here, and then I uh, I cut out I cut out some of the surface. I may, I want it to be as light as possible on both sides. Fillet, put the fillet on the edge along the edge here to make it less sharp. I add the fillet here to make it look smoother, and then I add the fillet along the outer edge of the hook. Then I put on the chamfer along the edge here to make it easier to fit. Uh, here's the important part. Let me turn on the point cloud. You can see that the, the maker of the scooter Yamaha, they make uh, their parts taper. See here? To make it more difficult for others to copy their parts. I see that a lot in uh, in car and motorcycle parts. They, want, they don't want anyone to copy their parts, so they make it more difficult to produce. We have scanners, so we can see that it has a taper, taper edge here. So I add the taper along all of the four sides here. Uh, this will be uh, final. I put a load here at 60 kilograms. I fixed the, the bow flank here 
and use the uh, frictionless support along the back and then I uh, do the simulation so here we, we have a uh, 150 megapascal maximum stress which is uh, much lower than the yield strength of the printing part which is 400 and the safety factor is uh, above 2 so we have a uh, we have a very strong part and it's uh, really light. If you look at the uh, displacement at full load, the hook will move only uh, 0.2 millimeters. If I print this with a plastic, it will be much bulkier, thicker. If I print in uh, in a stainless steel, it will be much uh, smaller, more compact. Uh, it's a final part with a proper design, uh, load check, safety check, and dimensional check. Uh, so this should fit with the original mounting mounting point. Oh, okay, so we come to a second page. Add a 3D files. Okay, so my hook shows here. If I print in the SLA resin, cost uh, 1.43, I choose the metal, 21 US dollar. Shipping, uh, country, region, I ship it to uh, Thailand. Shipping 16. Uh, FedEx is cheaper. I just save it to uh, the cart. And then I make uh, payment. That should be $32. Okay, I order it and see how it goes.